Hey guys, this is MJ at Who's Truly. Hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day today. I got little Tootsie on my lap, scared, because we actually have tornado warnings here in the panhandle, but I'm gonna read Psalm 91 to y'all. And to me. <laughs> this is out of my mom's Bible. I love my mom's Bible. It is a large print. I'm gonna show you this, how large this print is. How's that for perfection for my eyes? So this is the Living Bible. Well, this is, yeah, the New Living Translation. I read out of different translations, which is okay because God's word is inspired and God gives us wisdom. The Holy Spirit inside of us is the one that gives us wisdom. They who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest. He who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I will trust in him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord, your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon the lions and the cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call upon me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. That is my favorite Psalm and very appropriate for today. Yeah, my husband just called me from work and said, just calling to let you know there's tornado warnings in the area. So we know that God's protection is upon us, huh, Tootsie? So tomorrow is our journaling day and we are going to be on the letter E. Haven't decided what the words are going to be yet, but just want y'all to be thinking on that. So I'm going to share from one of my journals in 2022, which is very appropriate today. Okay. Today is a new year. I believe it will be our last. Okay. Not because of death or tragedy, but because time has come to pass. This is actually <laughs> the time that God has spoken of where Father tells Jesus to go get his bride. The rapture of the church where in his eternal love will hide. In that place that he has prepared from the beginning of time. For those of us who have said, I do accept Jesus as mine. For richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health. We faithfully chose to trust in him, enter in to our spiritual wealth. The tribulation will soon begin, a time of tragedy as this world has never known. True Christians will all be gone as this world continues to groan. When the restrainer is removed, you will very soon see that they will attempt to take your will and make you forfeit your liberty. Yes, today you are alive, but you must be born again a condition that is required of all to remove our guilt and sin. Jesus said we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Do you know, my friend, for certain that you, you've been washed in his precious blood? After the rapture, you will be required to take the mark of the beast, a decision that will propel you into eternal hellish defeat. Choose wisely, my friend, for there is no turning back. Heaven or hell are eternal, not a man-made myth, but a fact. 
If you find yourself in the tribulation, the church will indeed be gone. Remember these words, my friend. Remember this song. Jesus Christ is the resurrection, the way, the truth, the life. You must be born again to receive eternal life. If you're reading these words and have not been washed by the blood of God's precious Son, repent and be cleansed before it's too late. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Have you had a spiritual birthday? Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you a child of God? We are all creations of God, but we're not all children of God until we have a spiritual birthday. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. That is the simple gospel of our salvation. God did not make salvation hard. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe should not perish but have everlasting life. We all live eternally. This life here on earth, whether it be 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, is but a vapor. But an early fog in the morning. It's here today, gone tomorrow. But we will live eternally. That is a guarantee. That is a promise. That is a fact, a reality. Whether you choose to believe that or not doesn't change the fact that there is a literal heaven and a literal hell. There is a literal God and a literal Satan who are no way equal to each other. Satan is created by God for God's own purposes. And the tribulation we are sitting currently in the shadow of the tribulation, but we are also sitting in the shadow of Almighty God. If you are not born again, I highly, highly encourage you because the rapture is imminent. Imminent means it could happen in a minute, in less than the blink of an eye. The church will be gone. The church age will be closed. When that final Gentile says yes, we will be gone. And it will be the most hellish, dark time that this mankind has ever known. Read the book of Revelation for yourself. I mean, if you don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling you, you won't understand, but you'll see. You'll see the destruction and God's wrath that is to come upon this world. And Jesus took our wrath on that cross for us so that we don't have to go through that time because the tribulation, also known as the 70th week of Daniel or the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob is Israel, um, is for the salvation of the Jewish nation or to put, also to put an end to iniquity. For Christians... The end to iniquity happened on that cross. Okay, so we don't go through the tribulation. We are not appointed to that wrath. We are harpazoed, lifted out of there, this place, this wicked world, before it gets more wicked. And it is getting rapidly more wicked as the days continue. Um, normal isn't coming back, guys. Jesus Christ is coming back. And that trumpet, when you hear that trumpet sound, that is the rapture. We will hear the trumpet sound. Christians will hear that trumpet sound. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in those clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. There is a final generation that will see the day of the Lord, the rapture. We'll see the rapture. That is us. I believe that 100% with all of my heart. So 
If you're not a child of God, please, I beg of you today to come to Jesus Christ, because at that point, you become a child of God, adopted into God's very own family, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So it's very simple. God made it very simple. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, so the penalty for us being born into this condition called sin is death, eternal separation from a God who loves us, a God who gave himself for us, a God who became man himself, perfectly God and perfectly man, was crucified, buried, and on the third day rose again and is currently seated at the right hand of the Father, imminently coming back to get us. Okay, a, you simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of a savior. Okay, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us. Yes, we were all born this way. B is to believe, and this is key, believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins. Not only for the sins of this whole wide world, but your own personal sins. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. And see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not might be saved. Immediately and eternally we are saved when we call upon the name of the Lord. It might not feel like we are. God is not a feeling. He's a fact. Um, and the enemy will press in even harder and put lies in our head. Satan is a liar. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's been a liar from the beginning, a murderer from the beginning. People say, well, if there really was a God, that's the biggest, um, don't ever say if there really was a God, because there is really a God, my friend. He's the deliverer, he's the healer, he's your savior, the creator. That's one of the biggest lies, the enemy, if, if God really says this, if there really was a God, all this wouldn't be happening. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy, but he puts himself out of the picture somehow when he's accusing God of the unthinkable, when it's him that's doing all of this killing, stealing, and destroying. Don't let that someone be you. Come to Jesus. Be born again. Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm not talking about religious. Born again is simply being born of his spirit. And we're born into a condition of sin. So we're born again into the condition of Christ's righteousness. That is not even our righteousness. That's Christ's righteousness. Um, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of boasters out there in church, in the traditional brick and mortar church. Okay? There are a lot of ambassadors for Satan, ministers of righteousness for Satan, Truly scriptural, behind the pulpits, in churches, teaching the potential loss of salvation. And Christians walk right out the door into the world because pastors tell them you have to maintain a certain standard. No, you don't. The standard was met on the cross when Jesus Christ said, it is finished. So please do not fear the loss of your salvation. And this is not a license to sin. We love him because he first loved us. And the Holy Spirit continues to do a work in us. He who began a good work in us shall perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. That's a promise. That is a promise in the word of God. But prodigals don't read the word of God, do they? I didn't for 10, 11 years, however many years I wandered. Not all who wander are lost. But 
The enemy plants those seeds in our head. And boy, do we listen to him. God doesn't care about you. God doesn't love you. If, if God were really real, and if you really got saved at the age of 11, pfft, you surely wouldn't be doing all this. If you got saved, certainly you'd have the power to stop all this stuff. A lot of us come from early childhood traumatic environments and that trauma has never been dealt with. So we continue to live out that trauma and we produce those same results, reaping and sowing the same thing we saw in our childhood. And when we come to Christ, we're new creations in Christ. Indeed, old things have passed away. All things have become new, but we live in the same soul, okay? So if we choose to walk out of the brick and mortar traditional church, we're still the church. Whether we're sitting in a bar, sitting in some hotel somewhere, sitting in a crack house. And I don't care the opposition that would come against me because, uh, and there is a lot of opposition and people don't believe prodigals are really prodigals. And you know, you couldn't bid a prodigal for so long. Jesus Christ is faithful to bring back his own Thank you very much. All right, he doesn't depend upon a brick and mortar church. And this is the whole entire reason I do this channel because nobody came looking for me when I left that church. I mean, I grew up Catholic, went to a Catholic school and everything, but at the age of 11, I got saved in my grandmother's church, my great grandmother's church, got born again in my great grandmother's church but didn't understand any of it. I understood the gospel. I understood that I would go to hell if I didn't have a savior. I understood that apart from knowing that Jesus covered my sins and believing that he was my savior, that I would go to hell. And I knelt at the altar that day and believed that with all of my heart. And Jesus took me up on that. But I wondered, not all who wander are lost. And the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So know that when you come to Christ, he is faithful to complete the work that he has begun. I'm not telling you not to go to a church. I'm telling you to make sure that your church is doctrinally sound. This channel is 100% pre-trib. I'm not a pastor. I am not a teacher. I am not a counselor. Please understand that teachers and pastors have a higher accountability and that accountability i don't want to fall on my shoulders i'm simply a redeemed member of the body of christ brought back from the brink of death and destruction addiction and the lifestyle that accompanies it for such a time as this okay so god says if any man lacks wisdom let him come to me i pray for blanket wisdom for this channel everybody on this channel everyone every family member represented on this channel. Because God says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him come to me. So, um, and you know, Psalm 8, the Lord made wisdom in the beginning before he made anything else. And boy, I was the foolish one. And I walked around for so many years, not knowing. And if I could reach only one person that doesn't understand the gospel and doesn't understand the simplicity of the gospel, that you don't have to do anything, that Christ did it all for you on that cross when he said, it is finished. Our sins past, present, and future forgiven because we couldn't do it. That's why he had to do it for us. But we walk around hanging our heads and blame and shame and discouragement and defeat. And, you know, God doesn't love me. And oh, I can't believe I did this and I blew it again. And the Holy Spirit abides within us. He doesn't want us to com continue to beat ourselves up. By grace, we have been saved. It is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. We receive that by faith. Trust in that. 
Trust in God's ability to complete that and bring it to fruition, okay? I can't tell you how many people say, you know, um, I pray that I'm worthy to go in the rapture. None of us are. So just letting you know up front, none of us are. None of us are worthy to go in the rapture. And there is no partial rapture. We are worthy only by the blood of the Lamb and being covered by the blood of the Lamb. Just like in the Old Testament, Passover, when that blood was put upon those doors, Passover, okay? It's because of the blood of the Lamb and what Jesus Christ did on that cross and us believing in the shed blood of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary, on our behalf, that we will go in the rapture. It's not because of what we've done or not done here on earth. Okay, so it's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, an irretractable gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. Understand that, get that deep, deep down in your spirit, and your entire walk with Christ will change. Okay? Romans um, 35 and 39, um, Eight, Romans 8, 35 and 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 17, 24, Father, I want those that you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of this world. We're about to see that place. That place that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. That's us. And so when you write in the comment section, I pray that I'm found worthy to escape the tribulation. We are worthy only because of the blood of the Lamb. We are made his children. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are his righteousness. There's nothing that we did but believe. Understand that. It's hard to believe. I know it's hard to believe. Unconditional love. It's hard to believe. We think we have to do something. And that's how the church fools a lot of people into, you know, tithing and giving this and giving that. And, you know, if you give this, God will give his favor. And, you know, this name it, claim it business. And, you know, the church has replaced Israel. Let me tell you, the church has not replaced Israel. God is getting ready to step in even now for his beloved Israel. Israel is surrounded on seven fronts, and it is very, very biblical, and prophecy is unfolding at warp speed. Damascus will be destroyed, uninhabitable, okay? Christians, we're not waiting for these horrific things to happen, but the worse it gets, the closer we are. And the darker it gets, the brighter we shine. So don't let these circumstances, don't let poverty and economic status and whatever you're going through, pain, emotional trauma. You know, sometimes we put ourselves in that emotional state by engaging in other people's garbage. Detach 
yourself from somebody else's emotional trauma, their emotional business, especially if they're choosing the consequences of, if they're choosing to walk that route, they're choosing the consequences of that. And sometimes we engage in that. You know, sometimes we allow our thought processes to go there. As soon as you find your thought processes going there and, you know, oh, I can't believe this and I can't, oh, geez. It's a, when we find ourselves overwhelmed, be anxious for nothing. There are 365 verses in the Bible that tell us don't worry. Be anxious for nothing, not to fear. Because God does, God's got this. So when we stay up late worrying at night and we're fearful and our mind is occupied with all of this stuff on, on behalf of other people, just pray for those people because you can't do anything about it anyway. We can't do anything about our past. We can't change our past. We can't change their past. We can't change what they're doing right now. We can't change what our prodigal is doing. But the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, the Bible says. If it were not for my great-grandmother's prayers, I firmly 100% believe I would not be here today alive. I would be with Christ because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I would not be alive. I would have died in my 20s before coming back to the Lord as a prodigal. And I know that with all of my heart because when I came back to the Lord, he gave me such a love for my great-grandmother who was still living and did indeed live another probably eight years after I came back to the Lord. And I was so excited, would send her poems and would tell her. And, and she, it was as if she knew all along, you know. I mean, I was in Miami and she was in Pennsylvania, so she didn't really know what was going on in my life. She didn't really know I was running kilos to, co you know, of cocaine to from South Florida to New York. And, you know, um, we would stop at her nursing home and see her on the way back from New York um, to South Florida. She didn't really know what was going on. But boy, did she intercede on my behalf. And if it was not for the prayers of that godly woman who I avoided, who I grew up with, her bedroom was straight across from mine and she would leave the door wide open at night. And sometimes all night she would be praying on her knees and I would yell, have the nerve to yell into her room. Can you shut the door? I mean, I look back on myself and think, so know that God has your prodigal covered. Okay. Um, there's nothing that we can do about our prodigal, nothing. And worrying is not gonna help us. We have to detach, totally detach. Pray for them, love them, encourage them, but detach because the choices that they're making are theirs. Um, yeah, those are not our choices. And the consequences that they have to live with are there consequences? We just be there. So we are the chosen generation to be raptured, I believe. Um, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain, I believe, is this generation. So be encouraged in that. The Bible tells us to encourage one another that we may be healed. Healed from what? All this garbage that's going on in the world. Everything that's coming against us, fiery darts that are coming against us. Um, encourage one another as we see the day approaching. Also, what day is that? The rapture. Encourage one another as we see the day approaching. Labor pains are off the chart. The ring of fire we are in right now. I don't know how long it's going to last. But Matthew 24, common, more commonly known as the Olivet Discourse where Jesus told of when, when the disciples asked Jesus, what would be the signs of your coming? Well, he said, the first thing he said was deception and then wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in various
guys, divers places. This climate change is a hoax, guys. It's not climate change. It is labor pains. The earth is groaning. We have arrived. We are at the end of this dispensation of the church age. And that's a reason for us to rejoice, regardless of what's going on. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. But if you're not saved, I'd be terrified. Literally, I would be terrified. Um, and that's not, you know, fear mongering. It's just we know what's coming up because we know the end of the book. So um, just know that. All right, so I'm going to read out of my first book, Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock. I have, like, just a love for this book because it's just... I don't know, it was my first book, and if you read it, you can see that it was my first book. It's This is called My Eternal Engagement. To all the prodigals out there, God's got you, no matter where you're at. He's got you, and you're just as saved as the moment you said that I do. You're just as saved now as the moment you said I do to him then. Okay, 1973, being of sound mind, I became eternally engaged. Sound mind of my will, my spirit became eternally engaged, destined for glorious matrimony. Despite the repetitive betrayals on my end, the groom never terminated the engagement or canceled the wedding plans because of my tremendous lack of knowledge. The moment I breathed the words I do, my decision was recorded permanently in the Lamb's Book of Life, sealing me immediately and eternally to our glorious matrimony. Throughout the barren seasons of my life, my groom patiently waited, knocking ever so gently upon my heart's door, fully mindful that one day I'd gaze down at his ring and discover the true meaning of our engagement. He also knew that one day in the not-so-distant future, his ring would radiate a passion and vitality that I'd treasure, eagerly sharing its significance with you. It wasn't until I'd thoroughly exhausted myself in combat, suffering near spiritual starvation, though, that I stumbled upon those seemingly hidden rules of engagement containing the timely message that you're about to receive. To those Christians bound by foreign lovers, addiction, and fill in your own blank, the groom's message has the supernatural ability to transform your entire existence if you but open up the door and allow him to. Wherever you are, Jesus Christ wants you to know that from the moment you said, I do, you too became eternally engaged and bound for glorious matrimony. Despite your perceived rejection or your your repetitive rejection, sorry, of his indwelling presence thus far, he wants you to discover the timeless truth that nothing you've ever done has separated you from him because you've been his spotless, beautiful bride from the foundations of this earth. Jesus wants you to know that regardless of the distance that you've traveled thus far, he's never broken his covenant promise to you and bids you to draw nigh unto, unto him where you'll discover the timeless truth concerning this glorious engagement. For only in receiving the fullness of his counsel will you receive the fortitude to release those present day lovers. Fill in your own blank. Mine was addiction. Hit me hard. You know, they say addiction runs in the family or alcoholism or you're born an alcoholic or you're born an addict. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Genetics load the gun and we pull the trigger. We're born into a condition called sin, not a disease. We're born, we're all born into this condition called sin. For this reason, we must be born again into a condition called Christ righteousness. That is the only way that we have victory over this condition called sin. Um, the vast majority to whom this channel or book is written long ago convinced themselves that they forfeited the engagement. My prayer is to convince you otherwise. Behold the rules and live. Although I had accepted Christ at the age of 11 and believed the gospel, my sins had been eternally pardoned. My flesh needed to die to its own selfish agenda before I had even a remote willingness to hear what God had to say concerning my life. Because God foreknew everything about me before I was born, 
He knew exactly how I'd fall and planned precisely how I'd get back up. In his sovereign wisdom, he allowed every bit of it to transpire simply because in his economy, death always precedes resurrection for those born of his spirit. For Christians, like it or not, de death and resurrection are the only rules to the engagement because of the simple fact that the servant will never be above the master. The moment I decided to let Christ have his way in me is precisely the moment that I began to live. It's embarrassing to say, but being Christ's bride meant nothing to me at all until searching for my identity in a foreign land proved an elusive endeavor. Although my motivations were innocent enough, it was my lack of understanding of spiritual warfare that targeted my life for destruction beyond, beyond belief. Paradoxically, it was only when I arrived at that lowest point of despair that this powerful substance within my spirit was made visible enough for me to see it. And although God had long ago imparted it into my hope chest, it became visible, listen, it became visible only to the degree that I willingly surrendered to its divine reality. So the more we surrender to God, the more we know and he makes known to us his will his word, his truth. And although we're saved, we've been out there so long wandering, we haven't been in his word. So to the degree that we surrender, open the word of God, seek him, be still and know that he's God. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. That's a promise. So, the treasures I've discovered thus far are too priceless to keep to myself, especially when I consider the number of prodigals out there still perishing behind enemy lines. What grieves our Father's heart the most is the sad fact that many of you simply won't make it. Those are just the, heart, those are just the heartbreaking statistics, especially with this fentanyl here now. It's, it's heartbreaking to me. It's heartbreaking to me to see what's coming across our borders what's permitted, that there are no boundaries. You know, God believes in boundaries. Um, we're about to be raptured, guys. Those are just as the heartbreaking statistics. While you've depended so upon your makeshift castles, hiding out in counterfeit shelters, never meant to keep your enemy out, he's crept right into your home without any resistance from you, simply because you've yet to understand the rules of your own engagement. Failing to nurture the spiritual bond of trust so vital to your own survival, you've permitted the only one capable of defeating your enemy to stand outside knocking without so much as even glancing in his direction. So that you know exactly what your options are, I pray to make it clear throughout the pages of this book or this channel that Christ's resurrection power is the only remedy that any of us have to rid our souls of the adversary we've so innocently welcomed inside. Once upon a time, I felt so powerless to do anything about your captures. Your captures. I'd close my eyes and visualize your faces, asking myself how any of you would survive without the proper training. Day after day, I'd see our groom gently calling out to you to no avail. His voice sadly unrecognized simply because you bought the lie that you're too far gone. I hated having those flashbacks until one day I discovered some very interesting papers lying at the bottom of my heart's treasure box, buried beneath stacks of my own lengthy battle records, laid hidden a longest list of names to whom this channel is dedicated. That day in my hope chest, I discovered more than a list of names. I found father's handwritten dowry with a note urgently requesting my assistance to locate you. The assignment read as followed. Daughter of the living God, your life is now a platform for my spirit to boldly speak. The doors will quickly open. Remember my guidance to always seek. Each lie the enemy has attempted to bind you with, I will use for heaven's glory. Many lost souls will find their way back home because you've chosen to tell your whole story. 
Arise, sweet daughter of the living God. Take these words and quickly run. I have paved the way and opened the doors for you to glorify my son. Let the fire of my spirit illuminate the way. Inquire of my prodigals, still broken and astray. Let them see by your example that I can right every wrong. Show them that what they have believed to be a curse can be their soul's sweetest song. Tell them I have never left them, that I am waiting to set them free. Every child of mine is destined for complete deliverance and victory. I will complete the work that I started. Nothing can pluck them out of my hand. I am always interceding. Tell them I am who I said I am. Goes without saying that I have willingly accepted that assignment. And I will end with the fact that I know there is a devil and you need to know there is one too. Okay, because if you got a lot of opposition, Jesus Christ defeated that devil. But if you don't know there is one and that he hates you, there's a problem. I know there is a devil for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this foe. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me, keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. So guys know that once we're saved, we are eternally secure. Know that is not a license for sin because sin will bring you to your knees and bring you right in the direction where God wants you to be because God created Satan for his own purposes and Satan can do nothing without first God's permission. So if you are indeed a child of God and you're out there sinning and you're out there, God will turn you right back around. So run back into his everlasting arms. He's waiting for you. Know his love, his grace, his mercy. Psalm 103, know his character. Know he is faithful. And he will do what he promised that he will do. So tomorrow is um, the letter E. So be thinking on the letter E. And I'll be back on tomorrow. Until then, have a beautiful get days, uh, the rest of your day, guys. And keep looking up. Our redemption draws nine. God bless you guys. Love you.